Hello, stranger. Hi. Uh, how are you? How are you, Jonathan? Good. 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 How are you? Good. Baruch Hashem. All is good on the back forty. Yeah. <laughs> how about by you? Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, no complaints. I, I actually intend on praying in Jerusalem tomorrow. Yeah, fair. I, so hopefully I'll get to Minion, then I'll get to Jaffa Gate. Everything will work out well. It has been a long time since I've been in Jerusalem. Right. Uh, I had I, this fall about 36 days ago, which yeah. kept me very like out of it. But like now I'm out and about. Did you break did you break anything? I don't think so. There might have been a small tear in the meniscus, um, in my right knee. I had a CT and it said, really, if you want to know, you need an MRI. But uh, my doctor thought from the way that I was healing that the MRI wasn't necessary. So whatever. It's just good to be back to, to working again. I have somewhat in the area of about 33 days of work over the next 45 days. So oh, wow. I have no choice. <laughs> out of the, all of it out of the country or? Uh, well, there are three trips to Poland. One of the trips to Poland is six days there and six days here, Guardian Group. And then I have another seven days uh, here in Israel. So it's, I don't know, it's mixed with, I guess, a little bit more time in Poland than here. But that's just the nature of the beast, whatever it is. When, you tour, in, when you tour in Israel, where do you usually tour? What kinds of, of trips? Well... You know, last summer, because I hadn't worked for two years, I was naive enough to take five birthright groups in a row. Oh, wow. Um, and that was too much. That, like, nearly knocked me over. In this case, I have a family, and we're, you know, one day we're going up the coast from Tel Aviv to Caesarea to Haifa to Akko to Rosh Nikra, and you know, back in Jerusalem. Another day, Masada and Getty, then going up to Tiveria and the Golan, Svat, whatnot. You know, what mm -hmm. what, whatever, whatever Beautiful. comes. Yeah. Oh, I see. We're not alone anymore. Yes. Yeah. How, did this, how did this family find you? Where do you advertise? I don't think I've seen. Oh, I haven't advertised in 30 years. Um, it's, it's all word of mouth. We'll know you. Okay. It's very funny. When I was a, a brand new, fresh guide 30 years ago, someone convinced me, please advertise in our synagogue bulletin. Uh, and I did. And I never got work out of it. But I, I haven't lacked work for 30 years, so it's okay. Good morning, Rabbi Kenningsburg. Good morning. Okay. Okay. Oh. How's everybody? Yum, yum. It's good to see Paul back. <laughs> In it's, good, it's very good to be back. <laughs> nice to be seen. I believe yeah. that's Rabbi Paul. Uh, Just saying, you know. Hakai. Yeah. And there's Moshe. Uh. Okay. Good morning and welcome back. Welcome back to everybody. It's uh, good to be back together learning again. We are moving our way through Masechet Makot. We're coming up to the end of the third parak. Not, not quite up to the end yet, but we're almost there. We're on Daf Yudchet Amud Bet, is where we left off. Yudchet Amud Bet, we are going back to the topic of Bikurim, which is something we spoke about quite some time ago. It was in our Mishnah. You'll remember. <clears throat> it's only one daf earlier, but it's uh, taking us a while to get there. The Mishnah of Daf Yud Zayin Amud Aleph mentioned the idea that our Chel Bikurim Achilokar Aleh is one of the things for which one would get for which one would get uh, Malkot. So we're continuing on now with the discussion regarding Bikurim. Obviously, Bikurim are only eaten by the coin in the Beit Hamikdash. Right, the farmer brings the first fruits to the uh, which are the Bikurim, they are brought to the to, to the Mikdash, and one needs to place them in front of the Mizbeach, one needs to say the uh, parasha, the Sukim of Mikra Bikurim. And we saw already the Machloket 
in the Mishnah, well, the Mishnah just provided one answer. The, the Mishnah said, she provided one opinion, excuse me. Said, He's going to get Malkot. If the Kohen is going to eat the Bikurim, before the one bringing them has said the Mikra Bikurim, that is going to be five Malkot, that's going to be Malkot. Okay. And we saw, that, that was the opinion of, that was the opinion of Rabbi Akiva and of Rabbi Shimon, who had that it was the Mikra Bikurim, which is going to be Ma'akev. But we saw there is, a, there is another opinion in the, um, sorry, one moment. Yeah, there is another opinion in the uh, Tanaim, which was to say that it's not the Mikra Bikurim, which is Ma'akev, but it's the Hanacha of placing them down before the Mizbeach. At which stage, if it had not, obviously both of them need to be performed, ideally, so that the Bikurim can be eaten. But at which stage, if it was not performed, would there be a Chiyuv of Malkot? Okay, so that was a machlok at Tanaim that we saw. Now, Agmara is going to elaborate on that a little bit more. So we're on Yudcheta um, probably about halfway down the down the page. Right? It says Amara uh, Biyoshaya, which before that Amara Biyelazam, Amara Biyoshaya. So what I've just mentioned was a machlok at Tanaim. We're now going to see a machlok at Amoraim about the same uh, about the same point. So Amara Biyelazam, Amara Biyoshaya. Bikurim hanacha ma'akevet b'hem kriya ain ma'akevet b'hem. Right. So clearly, this is not like the opinion of our Mishnah. This is following the Rabbanan, following the other opinion that says when it comes to bikurim, the hanacha is going to be ma'akev, placing them down before the mizbeach, um, whereas the kriya is not ma'akev. So mi amar Rabbi Elazar hachi. So says the Gemara. Did did Rabbi Elazar really say such a thing? The amar Rabbi Elazar. Amar Rabbi Yoshaya, he frished Bikurim kodim lachag, vava le'en achag, ye rakvu. Okay, so this is a, a, the case is where somebody set aside, somebody designated their Bikurim before Chag Sukkot. However, they were not able to bring, or they did not bring the Bikurim before, they didn't bring them to the Mikdash until after Sukkot. So then, says Rabbi Elazar, what, what is the halacha? Ye rakvu, you have to let them rot. You cannot bring them. You can no longer no, no longer bring them as uh, bikurim. So why not? My love, mishum delamatzei lemikray alehen. Could it be because surely it's because you cannot now say the mikra bikurim, and therefore we see from here that the mikra bikurim is ma'akev. That's what it seems to be. But as we've explained, that there are three different per- time periods when it comes to bringing bikurim. We'll just see Rashi again for a moment. Rashi here going up a little bit. Um, the, the previous Dibra Matri on Rashi is Karina Bey Vizar Lo Yochal, but there's a few lines below that. It's not in bold. But it says, Bikurim, Lifnei Achag, B'nei Kriyaninu. From the time of Shavuot until Sukkot, that is the ideal time for Bikurim. That is when one brings them, and one can do the Mikra Bikurim as well. Le'achar Achag, however, if one was to bring them after Chag, that is still the time you can still bring Bikurim. However, lav b'nei kriyanin. They are not uh, b'nei kriya, meaning you no longer at that point are able to do the mikra bikurim. Dichtiv, b'tal kriya, in the pasuk, after uh, regarding the mikra bikurim, it says, v'samachta b'chol atov. You'll, be, uh, you'll rejoice with all the goodness Hashem has given you. When is that referring to? That is me'atzeret v'adachag, shuzman simchat lekitat perot. The time of gathering in the fruit, the time of harvest, of collecting the fruit, is from... Well, the produce is from Shavuot until Sukkot. And therefore, that is the time in which for Samachta Bukhalatov applies. And then it's the time in which you can still make Viva Kore. But Minachag Ver Chanuka, maybe may not Kore. From, from Sukkot until Chanukah, one has not yet brought the Bikurim, they can still bring it. But without the Mikra Bikurim, after Chanukah, it's too late. After Chanukah, there is no more um, Bikurim at all. So, our case over here is that somebody set aside, designated their, their Bikurim before Sukkot, but they only brought them after Sukkot. Now, since it was before Sukkot when you designated it, so it was Chayav in Mikra Bikurim. But since you only brought it after Sukkot, you cannot actually say the Mikra Bikurim. Now, since you cannot say the Mikra Bikurim, and therefore you cannot actually bring those Bikurim, so surely, uh, that's the opinion of Rabbi el surely that means that Mikra Bikurim is Me'akev, is going to hold you back from fulfilling the mitzvah. Which contradicts what he said, right? So mi amar Rabbi Elazar hachi v'hamar Rabbi Elazar mar Rabbi Yoshaya he flushed bikurim kodim lachag v'avale en achag yerakvu my love. Surely this means mishum delo 
matzah le mikre alehen, because you can't do the mikra bikurim, otherwise, why not? What's the problem? The is akadatach kriyayim makevet vayen, and if you're going to say, what well, I mean, as I said previously, that the mikra bikurim is not going to be makev, so mayrakvu. So why should you just leave them? Why can you not still fulfill the mitzvah? So answers the Gemara, no. Kid Rabbi Zera, it's like the opinion of Rabbi Zera. Damar Rabbi Zera. Kolara oi le bila in bila mea kevet bo. Vekoshe nora oi le bila, bila mea kevet bo. Okay, so Rabbi Zera brings us here a halacha from, from um, Riva of the Koban Mincha, which we find the supplies in many different areas in halacha nowadays. It's a, a very relevant halacha when it comes to tefillah. And certain other things as well, which is he says, Kolara oila bila ain bila mea kevet bo. It's a little bit counterintuitive. But what he means to say is this that when a person brings a koban mincha, the mincha has to have oil and flour together. There's a certain ratio of oil and flour that needs to be brought. Why? In order that it can all be mixed in very well. That's called bila. Bila is when it's when it's a balu, right? When, when it's all mixed together. If you have too much flour, and the oil won't be mixed in, and then there won't be a, a, a bila, and then it will be an invalid korba. But what Rabbi Zera says is that kolara oil bila, so long as you have the proper ratio, so long as it is possible, therefore, theoretically, that the bila could take place, even if it doesn't, even if it's not mixed in together, it's still going to be kosher. But if it could not take place, then there would not be kosher in the first place. As it says Rashi here, the amar kolara oil bila, if, for instance, a person says they want to bring a koban mincha, they want to bring 61 isaron of flour. If they said that, then they have to bring 60 in one in one kli and one in a separate kli because they add shishim yacholin nebalal bekli echad. Because with the log of shemen, that's the amount of oil that needs to come with it, only up to 60 in one kli is that the ratio whereby, 60 to 1, a very familiar ratio to us from other, from other mm -hmm. contexts as well, but that is whereby it can mix in together. Um, right? Until 60, you could have a bila, bikli echad, aval shishim vechad, kimlo rabanan, denani vlalin yafeh. But the rabanan have a principle that that if it's uh, more than 60, 61, then it's not going to mix well. And then the Gemara over there asks the question, it says, okay, but even if it doesn't mix mix in, so what? Have we not learned that if you did not mix it together, it would still be kosher. Says, yes, it's true that if it was not mixed together, it would be kosher, but it could have been mixed. But if it could not have been mixed, then it would not be. Well, same thing over here. If you bring the bikurim at a time when you could, when you could say the mikra bikurim, so even if you don't, it's still going to be kosher. The queen can still eat it, but yeah, but it was not going to get malkut. But if you bring it at such a time where even if you wanted to, you could not say the mikra bikurim, that is going to be a problem. Right now, obviously, everyone agrees that if you only set aside the Bikurim, the Mishnah says there is a time when you bring the Korban when it includes the, um, when it includes the, when, when they are B'nai Kriya, and there is a time when you bring them when they are not B'nai Kriya, right? So, so if, um, sorry, can I just ask everyone to mute themselves? There's a little bit of an echo. Um, so, so if you bring your, your Bikurim at the time when they are not, when they are not B'nai Kriya, um, and, and there's no Mikra Bikurim, then there's no problem, right? That's if it was designated uh, in the first place after, after uh, Sukkot. But if it was designated originally, so the Chiyuv of Bikurim was, was applied on these particular fruits, at the right, right, when there was a possibility of, re of reading of the Mikra Bikurim, and they were only brought afterwards, that is going to be a problem, not because Mikra is Makev, but because there is no possibility for it here at all. Okay, so that is um, Okay, so continue. So we said, right, we brought that in the name of Rabbi Lazar, 
in the name of Rabbi Yoshua to say that because that they're regarding Bikurim, it's the Hanacha that is Me'akev, and it's not the Kriya which is Me'akev. Right? We challenge that statement, but we resolve the challenge based on what Rabbi Zaira said. Now, says the Gemara, actually, that is one version uh, that was said in the name of Rabbi Elazar and uh, Amar Rabbi Yoshaya. However, there is another version of this. So says the Gemara, um, Rav Acha Bar Yaakov Matnelei Kedrabi Asi Amar Rabbi Yochanan. V'kashale. Right? So Rav Acha Bar Yaakov reported the statement of saying that it's the Hanacha that is not uh, see Rashi. It says, Man ila lahad rabbi elazar amar rabbi yoshaya. Kid rab asi amar rabbi yochanan. Kid rab asi amar rabbi shmein rabbi yochanan. Not that rabbi elazar said it in the name of rabbi yoshaya, but that rab asi said it in the name of rabbi yochanan. Right? That, that the Kriya is not ma'akev and the Hanacha is ma'akev. Now, if we say that it was rab asi saying in the name of rabbi yochanan, we're going to have a problem. He says, Vakashalei. Why? Vakashalei to Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan. He said the statement as uh, he reported as having been said, the name of Rabbi Yochanan, but that is going to mean that Rabbi Yochanan actually contradicts himself from another place. Why? Says the Gemara, Mi Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Bikurim, Anacha Me'akevet Ben, Kriya En Me'akevet Ben. And that's what we just said. We just said that we're now saying the name of Rabbi Yochanan, that when it comes to Bikurim, the Hanacha, the placing that in front of the Mizbech, is going to be Me'akev. And the Kriya, the reading of Psukim, is not going to be Me'akev. We're now going to challenge both of those, both parts of that statement. Mi Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Bikurim, Hanacha, Me'akev, Ben, Kriya, En, Me'akev, Ben. Who says Rabbi Yochanan actually held this way? Because, Veha, Ba, Mine, Rabbi Yassi, Me, Rabbi Yochanan. Don't we find that Rabbi Asi asked Rabbi Yochanan the following? He says, "Bikurim me'ema tay mutarin lakoanim." Right? From what point? This is another way of phrasing the question. From what point are the Bikurim going to be allowed? Are Bikurim going to be permitted to the koanim to eat? Vamale answers Rabbi Yochanan, "Haroyin lekriya mishakara lehem." So answer Rabbi Yochanan, well, it depends what you're talking about. If you're talking about Ruyin Lekriya, i.e. those which were brought from Shavuot until Sukkot, then it's going to be Mishakarale, from the time in which you said to Mikra Bikurim. That is when the Kohanim Kari. V'she'en Ruyin Lekriya, and those which are not Rui in the Kriya, i.e. they were brought, designated and brought after Shavuot, uh, after Sukkot, excuse me, right? So then he says, Mishra'u Pnei Abayit. Mishra'u Pnei Abayit. I.e. from the time they have come into the Azara, from the time that they have come into the uh, into the uh, Beit HaMikdash, before Banach has taken place. So wait a minute. This, the, the, this whole thing, this is completely contradictory, right? And... Um, if we thought originally that Rabbi Yochanan was saying Hanacha is Me'akev and Mikra Bikurim is not Me'akev. Oh yeah, look what he says. He says, if you bring Bikurim whereby the Mikra Bikurim uh, applies, so it's the Mikra Bikurim which is, which is Me'akev. So on the one hand, we have a stira uh, does, regarding, regarding Mikra Bikurim because here Rabbi Yochanan says it is Me'akev. Then he says, if you brought where Mikra Bikrim does not apply, so as soon as you brought them into the Beit HaMikdash, as soon as you brought them into the Azara, they're permitted for the coin. But what about Hanacha? Rabbi Yochanan told me that Hanacha is Ma'akev. So, so, so essentially, uh, originally we thought Rabbi Yochanan was saying that it's the Hanacha, which is Ma'akev, and the Mikra Bikrim is not Ma'akev. Now we're saying, Rabbi Yochanan says, actually, the Mikra Bikrim is Ma'akev, and the Hanacha is not Ma'akev. So it's completely different. It's, complete, it's, a, it's a complete stira. And that is why, that is why when uh, Rav Achabar Yaakov brings this, it says he brought the statement as being said in the Rav, uh, Rav Asiyah Marabi Yochanan and Kashele has a difficulty. Right? Kashele and Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan, and as we said, I'm just reading again, Mi'amar Rabbi Yochanan Bikurim Anacham Ma'akevet Ben Kra and Ma'akevet Ben. Right? And why? Because what's the challenge? Since when Rabbi Yassi asked Rabbi Yochanan, from when are the Bikurim allowed for the Kohanim? 
ואמר להם, הרואיין לקריאה, מי שקרא להם, ושאין רואיין לקריאה, מי שאו פני הבית, right, those which are fitting for קריאה, what is my cave is the מקרא ביקורים. And those which there is no מקרא ביקורים, it's מי שאו פני הבית. says רש"י אביה, מי שראו פני הבית, מי שייכנסו לאזהרה, from when they were into the אזהרה, והנחה לא מעכבת כלל. הנחה is not going to be מעכב at all. That is irrelevant. So says the Gemara, כאשר קריאה קריאה, כאשר הנחה הנחה. We have a, a, a סתירה in both directions, both regarding קריאה and regarding הנחה. So answers the Gemara, and essentially the answer here is going to be that Rabbi Yochanan, who is an Amora, was not actually expressing his own opinion, but Rabbi Yochanan was uh, e- explaining according to the Shita of the different Tanaim. And in both the Meimrot, uh, he's, he's uh, answering according to a different Tana. And uh, as we've already seen, it's Machloket Tanaim, and that's how we explain it. So we say, Lokasha. Um, sorry. So Kriya, Kriya. So first of all, regarding Mikra, Bikurim. Because we first said, Rabbi Yochanan says, it's not Makkev. And then he says, it is Makkev. So Kriya, Kriya, Lokasha. Ha Rabbi Shimon, ha Rabbanan. We've already learned. That this is a machloket, this is a machloket, Rabbi Shimon and Chachamim. Rabbi Shimon in our Mishnah tells us that Mikra Bikram is Me'akev, Rabbanan say no. So in the first statement where Rabbi Yochanan said that the Mikra Bikurim was not Me'akev, that was Aliba de Rabbanan. The second one where he says that it is Me'akev, that is according to Rabbi Shimon. Right? Lo Rabbi Shimon Rabbanan. Okay, what about Hanacha? Meaning, placing it down in front of the mizbech, that being uh, being me'akev. So anacha, anacha nami lo kasha. That is also not going to be a difficulty. Ha Rabbi Yuda the ha Rabbanan. So one of them is going to be according to the opinion of Rabbi Yuda, and one is going to be according to the opinion of Rabbanan. Remember again, uh, Rabbi Yochanan first said that the hanacha is the stage that's going to be me'akev. And he then said in the second statement that it's not going to be. So this is also a machloket, Rabbi Yudan and Rabbanan. And Rabbi Yochanan was just quoting the different, the different Tanaim over here. What is the machloket between Rabbi Yudan and Rabbanan? What precisely is it they're arguing about? And why does one say anacha is me'akev and one says not? So says, says the Gemara, Titania, we now have a brighter, teaches as follows. Rabbi Yudan, <coughs> Veinachto, <clears throat> okay. And then we've mentioned this before uh, earlier in the Gemara, but the fact that that word veinachto is mentioned twice, it's superfluous. Okay, it says in, in the in the psukim um, when you bring the when you bring the bikurim, you can see over here in Vayikra Zayin a pasuk lamed veatay neveti treshit priadama asher natata li Hashem. <clears throat> you will place it down in front of <clears throat> in front of Hashem. It also says the pasuk says regarding the coin. So that word is superfluous. So what do we learn from that extra from that extra inachto? So says the writer like this. Then you Rabbi Yudah Zotnufa. Okay, that is coming to teach you. I already know anacha. I mean, I already know that you have to place it down in front of the mizbeach. This is teaching you tnufa, which we have by certain korbanot, where it has to be waved in different directions. The tnufa has to be waved on top of the mizbeach, where we find tnufa by different korbanot. We find tnufa as well by the levim when they were invested. It says nochomash that when the levim were invested into their uh, service in the um, in the Mikdash, so Aaron had to go, he had to lift them all up and had to wave them uh, as well, so to speak. But this uh, Korban, the, the Bikurim have to be waved across over the Mizbech. So, so, so says the writer like this, Titania, Rabbi Yudam, although it uses the word Vinachto, you'll place it, what it's really referring to is uh, Tnuva, it's about waving the, the, the uh, fruit, the Bikurim, over the Mizbech. So, so which is it? Do you learn yeah, that it's Tunufa or is it actually referring to the Pshat 
of the anacha of placing him in oil anacha mamash. So kshu omer v'hini cho harei anacha amur. Here's the point. It already says hini cho somewhere else when it says in the psukim regarding the bikurim. It says lakacha koin atzena miadecha. The koin will take the basket from your hands. V'hini cho if name is bech hashem lokech and place it down in front of the mizbech. So we already it already says hini cho. Why does it say anachto again? So uh you know um Arenachamu Hamani Makem Vin Nachto Zot Nufa and therefore what is the what, what is the Nachto come to mean? That is that is Tanufa. So therefore that, that's what Rabbi Yuda says. So have a look just at Rashi over here. Rashi where he says Hi Rabbi Yuda. He says La Rabbi Yuda lo meakvanacha. So Rabbi Yehuda, therefore, is the one who says that Hanacha. Now, this is a separate question: the question of whether Mikra Bikurim, whether Mikra is is Me'akev or not. Because now we're talking about even in a situation where there was no, uh, where there was no Mikra, right? It was brought after Chag. Um, would we say that the Hanacha is Me'akev the Kohen from eating or not? Obviously, Lekatchila, the Kohen still has to wait until it's, uh, everything's been done. But the question is whether he's going to get Malkot if he eats it before. So he said, Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah, in, in Rashi, Lo anacha, the Anacha itself of placing in front of the Mizbech is not Me'akev, the Darish, V'hinachto yetera letnufa, because he learns out the fact that there is an extra Inachto, which is written, this verb of Anacha, is written an extra time in Chumash, that is coming to teach you the, the requirement of Tnufa, of waving. V'ein mikra. Uh, and therefore, according to Rabbi Yudah, I don't have an extra anacha in the pasuk to teach me that it's me'akev. But Rabbanan did not learn out from ya the requirement of tenufa. Therefore, so they learn from the fact that it says in Achto an extra time that that is teaching you that it is me'akev. That the anacha. Is uh, is going to be Ma'akev when it comes to the um, when it comes to the Bikurim. Okay, so who who is uh, this opinion? Who is this opinion that argues with Rabbi Yudah uh, of the Rabbanan? So says the Gemara now on the on the first of the long lines. It says Mantana de Paligale the Rabbi Yuda. Who is it who argues against Rabbi Yudah? Again, it's all revolving around the meaning of this word, the mean, the, the the where we derive the requirement of Tnufa from. And what we do with this extra word of Hinachto. So it says Rabbi Elezer ben Yaakovi. Rabbi Elezer ben Yaakov learns differently. The Tanya. It says the Kohen will take the basket from your hand. Okay. Rabbi Elezer ben Yaakov says from here yeah, we learn the requirement of Tnufa. In other words, everybody understands. Everybody agrees that Tnufa is required. It's just a question of where we learn it from. According to Rabbi Yehuda, we learn it from Vehinachto, and since we learn from Vehinachto, we don't have a superfluous and extra Vehinachto in the pasuk to teach me Anachaz Me'akev. According to Rabbi Elazar ben Yaakov, we learn it somewhere else, and then the Anachto is free to teach us that Anacha is Me'akev. Where is the somewhere else we learn it from? Lakacha Kohen Atenem Yadech. So says the Gemara, My time and Rabbi Elazar ben Yaakov. What is the reason of Rabbi Elazar ben Yaakov? Why does he learn from here? This um, this tnufa. Uh, so it says atya yad yad mishlami. So he learns it out as a gzera shava based on the word yad. It says here lakach hakoyin atene mi yadecha, and it also uses the word yad regarding korban shlamim. Right, ktiv acha velakach hakoyin atene mi yadecha uktiv. Yadav to Vienna to it Ishe Hashem. Makan Kohen, Aflalan Kohen. So just like Yar is the Kohen, so too over there it's going to be the Kohen. I who has to do the Tnufa of the of the parts of the of the uh, Korban. If you look at that pasuk, you can see it explicitly. That pasuk, the full pasuk says Yadav to Vienna to it Ishe Hashem. It's a chelav al chazeh Yivienu. It's a chazeh. So there it's very, very clear that it talks about the Tunufa, it talks about waving. And from that Xerah Shava, we learn therefore that it applies here as well. Now that is 
All of that is referring to the Kohen, that the Kohen has to do the Tznofa al Gabay Mizbeach. Um, right, then the, the, the Gemara continues. It says, Ma lahalan be'alim afkan ba'alim. So too, um, just as the, the be'alim also has to bring the Korban and has to do as much more that the coin has to be the, uh, do the, the, the Tnufa as well. So to, yeah, the Baalim, like the owners have to do it. So who does the Tnufa? Is it the Kohen or is it the Baalim as the owner? The answer is that it's both. So, so, so how so? Ha'aket said, Meniach Kohen Yadav, Tachat Yadei Baalim, Umenif. So the Kohen places his hands under the hands of the owner and they both do it, um, they both do it together. Okay, so let's just see Rashi. So we saw Rashi on Arab Yuda. Next Rashi was Vehinachto Zotnufa. So Kari Bay Vehinachto, the Shon Veloni Haminokim, and Shum Manche Otto La Alba Ruchot, Umale Umorin. Okay, so it learns out here that the word Hinachto is related, that, that, that root of Nun Chet. Is related to the words where it says in Pashat Peshalach, when Hashem took us out of Egypt, it says, nicham elokim derech eretz plishtim, that hin, that han nacha, han nicham, it's the same, it's the same uh, root, it's the same word meaning, it didn't, uh, Hashem didn't direct us, or didn't take us in this direction. So, so it's coming to teach you that when you have the, the uh, Korban, or the Bikurim, that you have to lead it in the four directions, and put it up and down. Right? So essentially six directions. That is the Tnufa, that is the waving across the Mizbeach. Maybe the last remnant of this that we still have nowadays is when it comes to the Arba Minim. Arba Minim, which we hold and we, and we uh, wave in, the, in all the different directions, There's an, there is a, an approach that, that is based on the Tnufa al Gabay Mizbeach. So those are the different, uh, you do in all four directions, north, west, south, and east, as well as up and down. Mantan and Tapaligale. Okay, so who is the Tana who argued against Rabbi Yehuda? Lemeima Anacha Me'akfat. He said that Hanacha is Me'akeh. He says Rabbi Lezer Ben Yaakov is an Avkalet Nufa Mikra Achrina who learns out Nufa from a different um, from a different pasuk. Mal Alan Baalim. Just as over there, it's going to be the Baalim. Da'ov be Baalim Mishtai. That pasuk regarding Shlamim is actually written regarding the owners. Dichtev Yaviet Kabanon Hashem Bizevach Shlamav. Uh, so they're just proving from the psukim how to referring to the owners as well. Okay, so just to sum, just to, to recap, just to summarize what we've seen, what we've seen over here. We started off saying that regarding Bikurim, we had a statement that Gemara said when it comes to Bikurim, the Anacha is, is what's Ma'akev, and the Mikra Bikurim is not Ma'akev. We first brought that. <coughs> we first brought that statement in the name of Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Yosh, Amar Rabbi Yoshia. And we then said, no, in fact, it was Rav Asi Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Rav Asi Amar Rabbi Yochanan said that with Bikurim, it's the Anacha, which is Me'akev, and not the Mikra, which is Me'akev. We said that is a kasha. That is a difficulty because we know that Rabbi Yochanan himself does not say this. Rabbi Yochanan, in fact, said that when, what is the stage which is Me'akev? What is the stage from which uh, the coin would still get uh, Malkot for eating the Bikurim? He says, if Mikra Bikurim applied, it would be from the time of Mikrabi Kurim. And if Mikrabi Kurim does not apply, so then it would be from the time of entering the Azara. Nothing to do with Anacha. So we said there's a double Kasha. Kasha number one of Mikra Mikra. You said originally, Rabbi Yochanan, that Mikrabi Kurim is not Me'akev. And now you're saying that Mikrabi Kurim is Me'akev. So we say, no, that is exactly the Machloket Tanaim. First, when Rabbi Yochanan says it's not Me'akev, that is according to Rabbanan. Then when he says, Mikra Bikram is Me'akev, that's according to Rabbi Shimon, as we saw in our Mishnah. All good there. Okay. Second stira was regarding not um, uh, Mikra or Kreya, but regarding Hanacha. Because originally uh, the Gemara said, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, that Hanacha is Me'akev. And then he said, no, Hanacha is not Me'akev at all. Once it comes into the, uh, once it comes into the Azara, the Kohen could eat it. You wouldn't get Malkut. So we say, uh, there again, that is a good. 
that is going to be Rabbana. So, uh, and it makes sense that in, in Rabbi Yochanan's first statement, where he says, where he says, Bikurim uh, and that both of those according to, to the Rabbanan, right? According to, in the second, uh, second one, where he says that the Nacha is not Makev at all, we said that was the opinion of Rabbi Yudha. How does Rabbi Yudha learn that? Rabbi Yudha learns that because he derives the fact there is an extra place in the Pasuk where it says Hanacha, where it says Vihin Nachto, that word of Hanacha is written a second time. The second time is not to teach you anything about Hanacha, says Rabbi Yudha. It's there to teach you the requirement of Tnufa. And therefore, um, and we saw in Rashi exactly how we learned it. And therefore, there is Hanacha itself is not Makev. On the other hand, Rabbanan, which is uh, Rabbi Elizabeth ben Yaakov in this case, say, no, we learn to Nufa from somewhere else. We learn to Nufa as a Gzara Shava from Yad Yad from Shlami. And therefore, when it says Vehen an extra time in the Pasuk, that is superfluous. And why? what, what does that come to teach you? <coughs> that extra Vehen comes to teach you that the Hanacha itself is what is Me'akev. So therefore, that, that, that where Rabbi Yochanan told us that Hanacha is Me'akev, that was the opinion of Rabbanan, of Rabbi Elaz ben Yaakov, and where he taught us that Hanacha is not Me'akev, that was the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. According to everybody, you would still need the Tznufa, Machlok, where we learn it from, but you would still need the Tznufa of the Bikurim uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to Bikurim on the Mizbech. Okay, continues the Gemara, now in the last line of the Amud. The last line of the Amud says, Amar Rabba bar Ada, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Now over the page, Bikurim. Me'ei matai, um, me'ei matai alehen. So he says, Bikurim, from when would you be chayav on them? In other words, until this point, we've been discussing from the perspective of, of the Kohen, right? The Kohen is going to eat it. At what point? Would, would, does he get uh, Malkot if he's eating it too early? At what point is he allowed to eat it? Now the question is from the perspective of the Zah, of the non-Kohen. At what point uh, would you be higher for them? It says Rashi, Mita, Zara, Ochlam, a Zar, a non-Kohen who would eat uh, Bikurim would be have Mita. From what point would that be? He says, from the time, from the time they've come into the uh, into the Azara, that that would be the uh, at that point would, uh, the obligation would, would kick in. So, Kiman, according to which opinion is this? Kihai Tana Tanya Rabbi as the following Tana Tanya Rabbi Elazar Mer Bikurim Miktzatan Bachutz Miktzatan Bifnim Shebachutz Arayin Kecholin Achol Dibrayim. <laughs> um, right, so, so, so Rabbi, Rabbi Eleza says that when you have Bikurim, if you brought them, um, you're kind of standing, stand, st standing on the border of the, of the Azara, and you have half, part of the fruits are, are outside and part are inside, that which is Bachutz, are still considered to be like Chulin. They still have the Mahmud of, of, of Chulin. And those which are inside already have the Mahmud of Hektesh. So, so therefore that supports that statement that we saw before. Amar of Sheshet. Bikurim. Hanacha ma'akevet ba'en. Kriya en ma'akevet ba'en. So Rav Sheshet says, now we see this is similar to the statement we saw of, uh, of, uh, uh, of Rabbi Yochanan. Um, the, like the first one, where he says, Hanacha me'akevet ba'en, kriya in me'akevet ba'en, that, that the uh, placing them down in front of them is be'ach, that would be, that would be me'akev, but, but the kriya, reading of, re, reading of the psukim, would not be. Okay, so this is very similar to what we saw before, Yadigmar asked the question again, and it says, what is the source for this? It says, Kama, um, Right, command. So, Kihai Tana, like the following, again, like the following source. The Tanya, Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Shlosha Dvarim, Mishom Shlosha Zkenim. Rabbi Yossi, sometimes the, the, the Gemara has like this. So, we have a brighter which tells us a few different, uh, one of the Tanaim, one of the Amoraim, le learned a number of different Alachot 
from the same place or from the same source. So Rabbi Yossi tells us there were three things, uh, three things which he learned from three Skenim. One of them is going to relate to our present our present halacha, our present discussion. So he says, Rabbi Ishmael Omer, Yachol Yale Adam Maser Sheni Bismanaze Birushalayim Vayochleno. Says, is it possible there's going to be a whole comparison here between Maser Sheni and Bikurim in our days? And it's going to go back. It's going to help us learn something out from the, the halachot of Bikurim in general. So the question is, he says, <coughs> Yachol, it's possible. I might have thought that Yale Adam Maser Sheni Bismanaze Birushalayim Vayochleno. That okay, we know that Maser Sheni needs to be eaten Biktusha, needs to be eaten in Yerushalayim. He says, Who says that that is dependent necessarily on the Beit HaMikdash? Maybe a person could bring Maser Sheni even nowadays into Yerushalayim and eat it. Right? So, so, uh, so like, wait a minute, the Dinhu, Bechol, 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 so it says we learn from a a a, a din from a kavachomer potentially from from bechol right? bechol which cannot be eaten nowadays either. so so it says maybe you would say you would say the following thing just like bechol taunavat makom just like a bechol a firstborn animal needs to be, also needs Havat Makom, needs to be brought to Yerushalayim in order to be eaten. So too, um, Sheni, the Unavat Makom, and, and, and Maaseh Sheni is brought, uh, needs to be brought to Yerushalayim to be eaten. Ma Bechol, Eino Ela Bifnei Abayit, Af Maaseh Eino Ela Bifnei Abayit. But we know that Bechol can only be eaten in uh, the Beit HaMikdash. So too, let's say that they say they might say because probably it can only be eaten in the Beit HaMikdash as well. So now it says the Gemara, wait a minute. The comparison, this is a bit, a bit, a bit similar to what we saw a couple of uh, ago, uh, making these kind of comparisons, the Kaaba Chomers and, and, uh, and, and challenging them. So it says, So it says, So it says, um, right, so he says you can't really compare with Bechor because Bechor has got parts of it which have to be offered on the Mizbech. There's certain parts, there's the, there's the blood that needs to be, uh, and, and, and therefore that is a separate din for Bechor, which certainly has to be in the Beit HaMikdash. Maybe Maser is going to be different and could still be in the Beit HaMikdash. It says the Gemara, ah, so yeah, we'll learn it from Bikurim. Bikurim will, will tell us the difference. It says Bikurim Yochichu. Sorry, that's the answer. So it says, So it says, you can learn it from, you can learn it from, from, from Bikurim as well, that just as Bikurim need to be brought up uh, in Yerushalayim, and that needs to be in the Beit HaMikdash, so too, Maser also needs to be when there is a Beit HaMikdash. Now, says, well, wait a minute, can you compare that either? Ma Bikurim, Ma Bikurim, Sheken Tonim Hanacha, um, right? How can you really compare it? Can you compare well, again? What we're trying to prove is whether Maser Sheni can be eaten without the Beit Hamikdash. So we have other things which have to be brought to Yerushalayim. We had Bechor, but we said Bechor is different. Bechor is so special because it has parts which need to be brought in the Beit Hamikdash. We said, okay, well maybe learn from Bikurim. We said, no, Bikurim is also different because Bikurim needs Hanacha in front of the Mizbeach. Um, okay, so so what you see from Yah. And we'll stop here at this point. Is that is that according to this opinion that Bikurim requires Hanacha and that the Hanacha is going to be uh, is going to be Meake. That is what Rabbi Yossi is teaching us. Okay, and that is uh, again going back to Machloket, which we've been discussing for the last uh, uh, the last Amar or so. But we will stop there and we'll pick it up from there tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Thank you so much, Bye, everybody.
Judy, what are you up to?
Yeah. I'll make it that way. So I want to get to do the count though. Yeah, I'll do the balance. Yeah, then I'll get it. Hold on. You want to count the level of count? Thank <laughs> you. 